Welcome my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Koboman. In today's video, I am talking about user migration to a new domain. And this is directly found in my article that it's called Top 10 Hard Desktop Support Interview Questions and Answers. I will provide a link to that at the end of this video as a thumbnail so you guys can just click it. This is a fifth part um, out of 10 um, in the series that I am making for this. If you want to watch the other ones, um, they're also very useful and very educational and a good refresher, a good practical refresher for us, the IT professionals. By the way, if you're interested in to uh, see what kind of gear I use or computers that I use at home and stuff that I have, there's also a link in the description to that if you want to check out to see what I'm using. Anyway, let's get to it, guys. So this is question number five from a desktop support point of view and not Active Directory. How would you deal with user migration to a new domain? And how would you deal with users affected by this change? So it's a two-part question. And uh, the starting of it says, from a desktop support point of view, meaning you're just a guy that works tech support, right? So this is not for somebody who is interviewing for network administration. Because when I say here, not Active Directory, that would mean somebody who is a network admin. That's the part that they would deal with and not necessarily somebody who does desktop support or tech support, if you will, right? And um, how would you deal with the users affected by this change? Incredibly important. The way I explain all of my uh, answers um, is in four part format, where I go from first, second, third, and a last point or explanation that I give to the potential employer that might be asking me this type of question. The reason for that is so that they know that I know what I'm talking about or that you know what you're talking about as well. So that's a good way to basically present your knowledge to them so they can see, oh yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. Simple as that. All right, let's get to it. So first part of my answer would be, I would make sure that users and management is aware that the change is coming and how it will affect them. So I would let them know, I would go to the users and you know their management and uh, let them know that this change is coming and I would tell them how it will affect them. So the way I would do this is, you know, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can go to them directly and you know, go to the management first and tell them, hey, we're going, we're gonna do this. There's a big project coming. Uh, we are switching all the users. We're switching everybody to a new domain. You don't have to be too technical about it. You just kind of have to get them a gist of it because they don't, they won't necessarily know the technical parts of, of any of this. Or you can just send an email um, to everybody that is being affected. Uh, but a lot of times management will say, okay, we will handle uh, the part of letting the users know. So this is just something you would have to figure out. But the reason for that is when you switch to a new domain, uh, there are a couple of changes that could happen. Uh, users could get new local profiles. And let me show you what, what I mean here. Depending how it's set up, depending how things are set up, I'm, I'm gonna wake up my here, uh, my uh, remote computer is asleep. Uh, in case you didn't know this, this actually pings the computer to, uh, it will wake up um, as soon as you do it a couple of times. It takes like three seconds, four seconds, and then eventually it gets you to it. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. When it comes to switching to a new domain, if you look at somebody's local profile, in this case, I'm using YT login, as you probably caught that um, earlier. And um, chances are pretty high that if I get switched over to a new domain, the that I may get a new login, or it would be the same login, but it would be a different domain. So ch chances are what I'm trying to say is that a new profile might end up being created next time they log in because they switched over to the new domain. So it might look something like this. So instead of just being called YT login, in my case, it could be called, and let me just create a new folder here just to show you, a, um, a kind of fake profile just to show you what might happen next time you log in. So it might say ye, YT, <laughs> I said ye, YT login, and then it might be just something like this, dot new domain. 
or something like that. And it would specify that, you know, you have now everything that's in this one, original one, is there, but this one is empty. You get it? So that's what might happen. However, in a, you know, uh, perfect world, I want to say, I have everything set up so that I have to provide admin privileges to make any changes. So in a perfect setup, this would just basically move all the files um, to the new login or to the new profile that I just showed you. So all the files that they had in documents, favorites, all their stuff would be moved over or they would have a different way of just making sure that everything is migrated properly. But you do have to let people know in case things go bad. They would, you know, they would log in next day and they would, wow, wh wh where's my stuff? You know what I mean? That, and that's, that's what might happen. So you just got to let them know to be ready for that. Second, I would choose a few machines to be converted ahead of time for testing purposes. This is, you know, obviously, guys, very, very important. Every time you work on a project, you want to make sure that you have some testing done. And uh, the way you do this, pick a few machines to be converted ahead of time for testing purposes. Now, in this case, we are also assuming that computers themselves are also going to the new domain right that would perfectly make sense since users are going to the new domain of course all the computers will be going to a new domain as well so this is something that has to be tested and the way you would do that you would just choose a few machines and then you would communicate this with the network team this is why i kind of uh, said from a desktop support point of view and not Active Directory because chances are you would be working with the network team with the network team on this and they would deal with the Active Directory part of it. So you just tell them, okay, I have, I don't know, let's say five machines, convert them to the new domain and then you can log in and test it. Third, I would reach out to the department managers to coordinate the switch so that the production impact is minimized this is kind of self-explanatory um, you would basically just talk to the department managers and the, or managers in general to kind of uh, pick a good time to do this so you don't want to do it during business hours or anything like that because that would be a production impact you know what if it doesn't work then you got a lot of people potentially a thousand people let's say you have a thousand people at your location that you support then everybody might be down but this is a huge, huge deal. So, you know, we got to make sure we do that. And of course, with those five or few machines that you picked, you can have actual users, people to use them and test them. You don't, you know, you can do testing yourself, but the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to have actual users dedicated uh, that they can test this for you. And you can talk to the managers and say, hey, I need five people to test this. And then you would test this over time. This would involve application and website access testing on the new domain before converting everyone else. And the reason you would, you know, involve testing of applications and website access is because the firewall settings. If the new domain already has exclusions um, for the firewall, um, then that's fine but if it doesn't have the same exclusions as the old domain then chances are some of these websites and applications may not work because the firewall would be an issue so just kind of keep that in mind these are things you have to test before you proceed with converting everybody you know what i mean so um, the last thing we want to do is once all the testing on a new domain is successful a green light would be given to convert all other machines to the new domain as well as the users. So, you know, once everything's working fine, no, there are no problems with the testing. You can, you know, you, if, if you feel comfortable with it, you can convert everybody at once or you can just, you know, do, I don't know, 50 at a time or something like that. You know, this is something, you know, you would uh, kind of decide for yourself. And depending on, you know, it's very situational. You know, all the businesses are different. Some businesses may not be affected that much by it. It all, there are so many factors, guys, that you would really have to kind of 
kind of decide on your own as you're doing the testing. And this would come just from being familiar with the place you work at, you know. And there you have it, guys. That's the end of this video. I will be mo making more. I appreciate you watching me and your support. Share your, share, share, <laughs> share your, well, you know, uh, share my video if you'd like with your buddies. Let them know, ask them what they think. And uh, I uh, hope you watch my other videos as well. They are really awesome, very helpful, very practical. All right, guys, please leave a like or a comment. I'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you so much and uh, have a good day. Bye-bye.